Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to speak about the subject of why is there a lack of communication in our society? Well, obviously, if you really think about it, once again, we have the internet, we have computers, we have cell phones and all these things. So yet, even though we are able to communicate very well, we have a very big lack of communication. But I don't think it's really a lack of communication. I think that the underlying thing is is that basically we are able to communicate much better. We've said that. And thus, we don't often communicate face-to-face. And I think that's what people always say about the communication, is the face-to-face interaction. And nowadays with things like Skype, well, obviously here too, I'm in front of a camera, I'm not in front of a person. Uh, and you have a computer screen, you're always looking at a screen. But looking into someone's eyes is very, very different. And that's the thing, is that people are able to communicate and they do so very well by writing it on a keyboard or by writing it on text and stuff like that, which is also a keyboard. But they're not able to communicate face to face. And it's that human interaction that I think we are really lacking because it's just not as convenient. It may seem more convenient to the older generation, but the thing is, is if you have to communicate face to face, well, first of all, you need to be in front of the person. You need to find the person. You also need to go to a place where there are people. And if there's a long long distance between one place and the other, well, it takes time. It takes effort. Whereas if you can communicate from your phone, if you can communicate with Skype, if you can communicate from a computer, well, here we go. You can just do it from your living room, you can do it from your bed, you can do it from pretty much anywhere in the world that has internet connections, of course. So I think that's where the lack comes. But the problem with that is that we still have this human thing in us where we do like to see face to face and we do like to communicate in person. And even though we have this communication where basically you could type something on Instagram, you could type something on Twitter, Facebook, and that little sentence that you said is thrown out to millions and millions and millions of people. And technically, the whole world could li- definitely like listen to you and stuff like that. And that's where it gets kind of confusing because, well, you're able to communicate with very little effort really and yet now you're face to face with someone you're face to face with someone and you're not able to speak you're not able to hold a conversation and I think that that's something that at the same time once again because we are humans we are people of the world we are people we are mammals so we need to figure out a way to find a balance because the people who do usually better in jobs, better in society, are people who have social skills. They're able to take on social cues. They're able to take on um, social behavior, the, the way that somebody talks to you, the way that somebody looks at you, the way that somebody moves, will have and hold a lot of social cues. But by being in front of a screen all the time, by not being able to communicate with real people all the time well now we have a lack of social cues and we are sometimes losing that humanity because again we are human we're not robots but that fine line between artificial intelligence and organic intelligence the biological intelligence is kind of starting to get blurred And it might get to a point where maybe people don't even need to communicate on a daily basis with other people at all. If you really think about it, even today, in today's day and age, well, you can have stuff delivered to you, to your house, anything. From pizzas to, to supermarket groceries to just Amazon orders. You never have to really leave. And with time, it gets easier and easier and easier and I do think that also it's going to get even crazier when there's going to be drones delivering packages to your house or food or whatever it is and 
On top of that, maybe drones that are flying you from one place to the other. Of course, they wouldn't be everywhere. There would be points where you could catch them and stuff like that. But that's pretty crazy. Now you don't even need a driver. And once you replace all the humanity with artificial intelligence, I'm not saying it's not going to work. It's going to be an evolution. It's going to be a difference. Our lives are going to be made easier on the condition that we also find a balance uh, money-wise, economically, where you're able to survive if you can't work because there's not going to be enough jobs because every job is going to be automated. But it goes back to the fact that I think that if we don't have good communication, well, we can end up depressed because we are humans and we're social. And that's where the word social comes again, where if we're always on the computer, well, we're lacking social skills. And the social skills are the skills that basically make us a part of society. So as you can tell, there's this whole, basically, it's not random, this word social. It's basically used everywhere and it's basically used in everything because we're a part of a society. So if we're not part of a society anymore because we're only spending time in front of computers and all these things, well, what's going to happen to us? What's going to happen to our humanity? I'm not really sure, but I do know that with time, there's more and more societies that are having problems communicating. The Western world is still not too bad, but you can see it in other places, um, some Eastern countries where, or Asian countries basically where, um, more specifically Japan, for example, where uh, they have very strict social rules where they have to be really good at jobs and really good at uh, school and all that stuff to be kind of like a good part of society. But then what happens is that they also have these long days and days and days and days of work and then they go back home and they're alone. There's a lot of people who are alone that don't have families and it actually is happening even in the Western worlds too. And the, the populations are shrinking, which means that the more you have education, the more you want to educate yourself, the more you want to not interact with people, the less family you will have. And then the third world countries are going to be the ones or the people who are from a poor uh, part of the world uh, or have smaller incomes that tend to have uh, families because they're not able to uh, have all these computers and stuff like that. And uh, they actually interact more with other people and interactions will, will lead to families and kids. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's very tough. Um, I really hope that we do find a, a good balance because we can't have first world countries where the population is diminishing so much. And then at the same time, having those big, big discrepancies between the medium class, uh, upper class, and then the lower class, because the barriers are not going to be existent anymore. This is going to be the higher class and then the lower class. But if we don't have a true middle ground, then there's no uh, symbiosis. There's no, uh, it's not going to be equal. It's just going to be too much discrepancy. And we need to be centered as a society. Otherwise, well, we're going to go into depression and sadness. Okay, well, that's it. That's all I have to say on the subject. Have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.